So I have this rocket, and because of the way I built it, I need to check it to make sure it'll be stable before I actually fly it. Hey friends, it's the Rocket Noob, and here we talk about building and flying model rockets and high power rockets. And in this video, I'm gonna show you a fun test you can do should you ever be unsure about one of your rocket's stability. A stable rocket flies nose first, more or less straight, as you would expect, you know, up. Now this is a semi-scale kit of a V2 missile and it's by Estes. Now normally if you have a kit and you're building it, as long as you follow the instructions, you don't need to worry about whether the rocket will be stable. They're designed to be stable. It does mean, of course, that if they give you some clay and they tell you you have to put it into the tip of the nose cone, you really need to do that. Or if you have a model like this plastic Saturn V and they give you a clear plastic fin unit to screw onto the back, you do need to do that. Now this Saturn V has fins, but they're too small to stabilize the rocket. So I couldn't actually find the clear plastic fins uh, for this rocket before shooting this video. I'm not sure where they are. So for the moment, I'm just keeping this one on display and I will fly it when I find the fins. Adding weight to the nose cone moves your center of gravity forward. The center of gravity is the balance point on the rocket. Now, having bigger fins moves your center of pressure, which is an aerodynamic balance point, backwards. In order for a rocket to fly stable, the center of gravity has to be closer to the nose cone than the center of pressure. Ideally, you want the center of gravity to be at least as far ahead of the center of pressure as one diameter of the rocket. An unstable rocket has its center of gravity behind its center of pressure, which is very bad. The rocket wants to fly backwards, but it can't because thrust is pushing it forward. So the rocket zips violently back and forth and crashes to the ground. Now, as I said, if you follow the instructions, you really don't have to worry about the stability of a model rocket because Estes has designed the rocket to be stable for you. You don't have to worry about it unless you significantly modify the rocket. Let me show you an example. This is one of my favorite rockets. It's an Estes Cosmic Explorer. They don't make them anymore. And the original kit was meant to fly on B and C rocket motors, which are about that big. This is a great flyer, but I actually wanted to take this rocket a lot higher. So I put in a larger motor tube so that it could fly on E motors, which are much bigger and much heavier than the B and C motors. What this does is move the center of gravity backwards, and I had to make sure that the center of pressure was still behind the new center of gravity. With a simple rocket like this Cosmic Explorer, this is super easy to check. You can use free open source model rocket design software called Open Rocket. Link in the description. This red dot right here is the center of pressure, and this blue dot is the center of gravity. See? Stable. Because the fins are so big, I didn't even need to add any nose weight to this rocket. It flies beautifully. It just goes and goes. The V2 did not only rely on its fins for stability. It also had an active stabilization system called jet vanes. Modern space launch vehicles pretty much don't have fins anymore. They only rely on active stabilization because their engines are gimbaled. Now model rockets, with very few and very notable exceptions, don't have active stabilization. They rely on the fins that are glued to the rocket. So in order to make sure that this model was stable, Estes made the fins larger than scale. That's why it's called a semi-scale rocket. So if you change the rocket significantly, either by making a larger motor mount, moving the center of gravity backwards, or making the fins smaller, then you need to check before you fly. But I'm building a scale rocket, and I've only got one of them, and I didn't want the fins to be larger than scale. I wanted the rocket to look more or less like the historical rocket. So I downloaded a template, traced it onto the fins, and I cut off some material. I cut about that much off of the tip edge of each of these fins. So I removed a lot of fin area. What this did was move the center of pressure forward. And frankly, I don't know where the center of pressure is on this now. I used Open Rocket to figure out where the center of pressure was on this rocket. It's pretty simple to do that because this is one long tube and these fins have four sides. The V2 is a little more complicated though. You see, it's not just a simple tube. The back end has this tail cone and the fins have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sides, including these little curved bits here, and they're all on the tail cone. But I'm just gonna be honest with you. I've tried and I haven't made a rocket simulation that looks anything like these fins. So until I can figure that bit out, I don't know where the center of pressure is on this, but we can do a test. 
The first thing we need to do is prepare our rocket for flight. And then we need to find where the center of gravity is. So let's start by taking this rocket into the rocket room and let's load it up. All right, let's set this rocket up to fly. So we're going to use the heaviest motor we're most likely to fly in this thing, which in this case is going to be a Black Powder E12 uh, Estes engine, because we want to make sure that when we set this up, the center of gravity is as far back as it is likely to be when we fly it, because that's what we're checking. Is the center of gravity too far back for the rocket to be stable based on where its center of pressure is? Okay, so we're going to put the motor in. All right. Then we're going to set it up with a parachute and recovery wadding. Now I already have the wadding in there. It's a little awkward for me to show you adding the wadding at this angle, so I've already got it in there. I used a combination of uh, a tissue paper wadding, which is treated for fire retardancy, and this stuff, which is great. This is cellulose blow-in insulation, and it's it's not the pink stuff. You don't want to use fiberglass. This is basically recycled paper and it is treated for fire retardancy. It's non-toxic. If it gets scattered around the field, it'll basically break down. Um, it's not gonna harm animals or people or the land that you are launching from and you always wanna respect people's property when you're flying. So this is cellulose insulation. A lot of rocketeers refer to this as dog barf because of what it looks like. You can get a bale of this really cheap at Home Depot or Lowe's and it will last you probably the rest of your life of launching rockets and it's great especially if you have a larger bodied rocket like this uh, it's good for taking up a lot of space then we're going to add our parachute i've already done a video on how to properly fold and attach a parachute so i'm just going to do this real quick and put everything together all right this rocket is now ready to launch what i'm going to do next is find the center of gravity and i'm going to use a long string a very long piece of string this is actually a piece of kevlar kite string and i'm just going to wrap it around the rocket and pass the other end through once i have done that i'm going to find the place on the rocket where it balances i'm going to find the center of gravity here that's perfect all right next what i have to do is i'm going to tape this in place with a piece of masking tape now i have the rocket balanced pretty much perfectly and here you can see the rocket is nicely balanced on the center of gravity. So now we're going to take it outside. So we're going to do something called a swing test. We're going to take the rocket to an open space, hold one end of the string, and swing the rocket around in a big circle. Basically, we're trying to get it to fly straight or nose first. Now, if we can do that and it flies straight, then we know it'll be stable and we can take it out and launch it. An unstable rocket will fly backwards. So if we can't get our rocket to fly forward, then we got some more work to do. Okay, so we're gonna try this out. It may take a couple of tries to get this rocket to fly straight. So if you don't succeed the first time, give it another try. Um, if it starts out going backwards, it's probably not gonna flip around. So the best tactic is to throw it in the direction you want it to go and start spinning. I haven't done this in a while, so we'll see how it goes. All right. I want to give it as much slack as I can. Looks like it's going nose first. That looks pretty good. All right, I'm gonna slow it down. All right, I think that worked great. Now I know I can take this to a launch and fly it and it will be stable. If your rocket fails the swing test, you might need to add a little bit of weight to the nose cone and then try it again. There are a few ways to add nose weight to a rocket, but with these hollow plastic nose cones, the easiest way is just to use modeling clay. Take a little bit of clay, roll it into a snake or a few clay balls, and insert it into the nose cone, 
Then you take a dowel rod and ram the clay into place. All right, so I've added my nose weight. I've done my swing test. Now it's time to fly this thing. Oh, nice. There we go. Nice. Well, that was just about a perfect flight. So if you like this video, do me a favor. Hit the like and subscribe buttons and stick around and watch another video. There should be one popping up on your screen right about now. Build well, fly safe, and I'll catch you next time. Oh, yeah. Nice. Ha, 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 ha.